up, guys? We're here at the Arson Podcast, and I have a brand new guest to bring you all today, Miss Sarah Hansen. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Welcome to the dark side of the moon. Uh, <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, I found you because I was looking up, uh, I can't remember his name, but he works for the WB, and he has done like a lot of movie scores, and apparently he teaches at the school you also teach at, which is Bradley University. Right. I, but he never responds to my email, so I don't know if he's just super busy or what. Do you know his name? I can't think of him. I'm embarrassed. I don't. Yeah, it's I okay. I kind of just go hide in my office. <laughs> <laughs> that one is. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So you are a professional cello player. Yes. How did that journey happen? Um, accidentally. Accidentally. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I started playing in my um, public school orchestra in fifth mm-hmm. grade. And the reason the cello happened is because my older brother mm-hmm. played the viola. And it's the viola jokes are right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, him being who he is, he at one point had dropped his viola on the ground or something, and of course had to go get fixed. Right. And me being a little sister, I was dragged mm-hmm. along to the shop. Of course. And I was enamored by the cello because it was the biggest thing I'd ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of insisted that I yeah. be able to touch one. <laughs> Florida one. double bases around? I uh, apparently not. Or I just mm. I just knew that was the dark side. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. And then yeah. about five minutes later, my first cello teacher walked in. Yeah, so, that's awesome, yeah. man. That's pretty cool. So that's it pretty wasn't cool. a conscious choice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, <laughs> trombone happened very similarly for mm-hmm. me. My older brother played saxophone and trumpet it was just like oh i want to play music too i also come from a musical family is your is your family musical no no oh okay <laughs> they right. they appreciate music so ah, i'll give okay. them credit for that <laughs> sometimes that's better because um you find yourself like being a musical family everybody knows stuff mm-hmm. so they all want to take no you should be playing it like this <laughs> and my mom who used to be is like a great singer and like she took she like modern music when she was in college like I don't know how she did that in nursing at the same time, but yeah, I know. Wow. Like, what? When did you have time to practice? Mm-hmm. But, like, every time I'd make a mistake, it was just like, oh, that don't sound right. I know that's not right. I'm just like, oh, my God. Can I just play? I'm making fart noises on a trombone. You know what I mean? <laughs> just just let it be what it is. Yeah. Man. Yeah, the only time they ever really know that something's wrong is if something squeaks. And they're like, I think right. you messed up. I know yeah, I messed I, up. Yeah, I can hear it. I can hear it. Thanks. I can hear it. Um. So you pick it up in fifth grade, like what was sort of the progression for you at that point? Um, slow. Yeah. So I mean, I, I was a very average fifth grade public school orchestra cello players. Like most fifth graders yeah. are. Yeah. Um, and as I got older, I got a little bit more interested in doing some of the music activities outside of school. Right. So I was in... I grew up in Cincinnati, so mm-hmm. I was in Cincinnati Junior Strings, and we did concerts in our red suspenders. Nice. <laughs> that kind of I did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I did um, that. So I yeah, did that. kind of the, you know, cute little kid right. school orchestras, mm-hmm. and then the youth orchestra later on. Um, I was never serious about it until mm-hmm. very late, I think, for someone who had gone into music professionally. Right. Um, and even didn't make the decision to go into music until I was applying to schools. Really? So, so you pretty much went through high school. Were you still taking lessons at that point? Yeah. So you were still getting better. You were just not serious about <laughs> that it. That depends on who you <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. That is fantastic. I dig it, though. I, I, I can appreciate that. I think that. I think a lot of people feel that way. I think we hear the stories of like the really great musicians who used to practice a lot at like 13. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, but I feel like most of us are kind of just like out here, like nebulously moving around. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. I mean, also, you play cello. So you don't see a lot of cello players like in like MTV music videos, which, no, which yeah, I think we're about the same age probably. Like, how old are you? Yeah, I am, okay, so we're the exact same age. So, like, in the 90s, there were a lot of music videos, you know what I'm saying? And I can't remember one video where I ever saw, like, a cello player being featured. 
So it's hard to take like your that seriously when there's like nobody else doing it outside right. of a, an orchestra. Yeah. And usually that's just like a bunch of old people playing like dead people music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is exactly what I do for a living. Yeah, I, that's, um, that's respectful. No, I mean, for at least for me, mm-hmm. I'm growing up in the 90s and being in high school in the early right. 2000s, you to be a string player and play in orchestras and mm. be in the school orchestra program, you had to embrace the fact that you were a nerd. Yeah, that's a real thing. <laughs> or the, I think the, the term we use is Orc Dork. Scorch Dork? Orc Dork. Orc Dork, oh, okay, that's new. That's yeah. new for me, okay. Um, so, you know, like, Orc Dork Pride was a thing. Right, I, I feel um, that. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's where I started. I never was like, yeah, I'm going to be a musician. Mm-hmm. And I still kind of feel like that's where I am now. Yeah. Um, I just never stopped doing it. That is <laughs> So you don't have any like plans for music? I mean, of course I do, but they're all flexible plans. I did. <laughs> I've had lots of plans. I did. I did none that. of them have worked out. I feel like that. Let's that get to those. So you get to college. Where did you do your undergrad? I went to the Hart School of Music, which is in Connecticut. I know someone there that just graduated from there. They have okay. a pretty good jazz program. Yeah. Yeah. I think Jackie McLean teaches up there. I'm pretty sure that's what he teaches. So you're there, is it, is that uh, like almost exclusively, is that like a conservatory? Um, kind of, so it's it's actually music, dance, and theater. Oh, okay, but so it's like an art It's part of the University of Hartford, which is a liberal arts school. Okay, so okay. both. Yeah, I <laughs> dig, I dig that, I dig. Um, so you get to college, it sounds like when you got there, like, yeah, you know, I'm doing this thing. Mm-hmm. Did they offer you any money? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm with that. So you're there. Did any, like, light bulbs kind of come on for you in college? Like, sort of, kind of? Um, I'm not sure there was actually, like, a light bulb moment. Mm-hmm. But I think, especially when I first got there, I saw the value and the potential of taking this thing that I've just had been doing right. my whole life and actually working really hard right. at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I was still very much interested in having my feet in other doors. Right. Um, so, and I also have a math minor. Just oh, really? Because okay. why not? I dig, <laughs> and, I dig, yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely, it became more of something that I wanted to focus on and really work hard at, but it mm-hmm. didn't, I don't feel like I put any blinders on, like, this is definitely what I'm going to do 100%. That's interesting. And then you went to grad school. <laughs> it wasn't a it wasn't a straight transition though. I actually sure. had a year in between that I I was still sort of at school. They have this program called the GPD, mm-hmm. which is basically a a degree that is just not worth anything. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so you're just kind All of right. there studying, yeah. but yeah, 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 yeah. Um. So I. Spent an extra year there doing that, and mm-hmm. I did not finish. But I also was teaching at the time, and I also was working on a farm. Really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you had an interesting little college. It was an interesting. Yeah, experience. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. So you're at the end. It sounds like you took somewhat of a break, sort of. Yeah, sort of. What made you go to grad school at that point? Um, Were you just too good to turn back at that point? <laughs> Is that sort of what it was? I'm not even there yet. Yeah, um, sure. I think it was actually at the opposite. I felt like I wasn't good enough to quit yet. Oh, so it's just, I feel like there's still more that I have to explore sure. before I can say, no, I'm ready to do something yeah, else. Yeah, 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 yeah. I dig that. Where'd you get your uh, grad degree? Oh, where? Yeah, where? Uh, at DePaul. At, oh, street, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. I feel that. Yeah. What made you choose DePaul from um, the hard school? There's a lot of really good schools on the yeah, East Coast. Really you know. Yeah. I loved the East Coast. It was yeah. It was hard to leave there. But yeah. um, So the te- my teacher at DePaul, Steve Balderston, he's mm-hmm. actually someone that I had very briefly studied with in high school. Okay. Um, I had gone to this summer program at Northwestern between my junior and senior years. It was five weeks long. And he was my teacher during that time. Okay. And he's the teacher at DePaul as well. Right. And he probably doesn't know this, but he was the first person 
up to that point when I was in high school that said, you know, you, know, you could do this as a mm -hmm. career if you wanted to. Right. And that was the first time I was like, oh, I, you should apply to music schools. Mm, yeah. Um, so that influence kind of remained there throughout my time in college. Mm -hmm. You hear that, teachers? You hear the kind of influence you're having on the on the youth? I just interviewed one of my former teachers, and I told him, like, basically I just talked to him up the whole time, like, telling him, like, how much of an influence he and a bunch of my other, like, music teachers had on me growing up. Because I I swear, man, like, I was just like, this is just a thing that I'm kind of doing. You know, it's yeah. like, this is just, I don't even know where to put this music. I knew I really enjoyed it, you know, but I was like, I don't know if I'll ever do this professionally. And they just kept, no, you could do this, you know, you sound great. And then you make these little bands, like these little all-star bands. You feel like, oh, man, this is really awesome. And then you're like, okay, so <laughs> is, this, is, this, is this what we're doing? <laughs> is this what we're doing now? So I don't know, man. I feel that. I feel that. So how did you get to Bradley? Like, what was that like? How did I get to Bradley? Um, there are a lot of little steps that sort of added up to having that position. Mm -hmm. um, while I was still at DePaul, I think during the time at the end of my degree when I was starting to panic a little bit about, oh my gosh, what am I going to, yeah. how am I going to pay my rent by mm -hmm. taking this big piece of wood and <laughs> playing it? Right. Um, so I took some orchestra auditions for some of the regional orchestras around. Okay. And one of them that I won was the Peoria Symphony. And Bradley okay. is in Peoria. Yes. Um, so I went took that audition and then the next year after I graduate, graduated, that was the mm -hmm. orchestra that I was playing in the most often. Right. And then because of that connection, as well as some friends of friends, I had learned about the opening at Bradley. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And kind of applied with the mindset of, oh my gosh, I'm not qualified for this right. time. Right. I don't know what I'm doing. And went down and got the job and then proceeded to teach it without knowing what I was doing. <laughs> uh, we'll edit that part out. So they're like, oh my God, she's working for us. <laughs> I, think, I think we're all, as colleagues there, aware of the fact that we're teaching and learning simultaneously. For sure. Right? For sure. I really dig The only difference between, really, I think between me and my students is that I'm just further up the path of figuring out mm -hmm. things. Yeah, I feel like that's definitely true. I feel like that's true in almost every class of every music class. Doesn't matter where, it doesn't matter how good the teacher was. Especially like I don't know what it is. Just like a just like a threshold as a musician you kinda of cross and it's like, Oh yeah, I can pretty much do this. You know what I mean? Right. Now obviously there's a lot more to learn, but you know, it's like you sing all the tricky rhythms, like you know, you can figure it okay, if I can't play it right fast. If I just slow it down, I'll play it right. And then, you know, it's like, well, what is this music? Okay, I can, you know, study something similar and kind of figure it out. So, yeah. like, the necessity of a teacher kind of decreases, but you never really stop needing one. You know, yeah. I don't know what that is, but it's like an invisible line. And you, you don't know you crossed it until you, like, look back and be like, oh, yeah, I can do this. You know what I'm saying? I think it's, it's becoming from needing a teacher to just being your own teacher. Mm, absolutely. So I hope, even when I'm practicing, I feel like there are like two people in the room. Sure. Just like, okay, Sarah, how do we need to work? On yeah. <laughs> well, For sure, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, man. That's fantastic. I'm glad you could be your own motivator in there, man. Because you're right. You know, it's very interesting. Like, almost every significant breakthrough, it's it's happened because I'm just like, okay, dude, you're sucking really hard right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, how are you going to stop sucking? You know what I mean? And then I end up taking like one bar at a time. You know, it's just like, oh, okay. So it's like, okay, this this four beats suck less, this four beats suck yeah. less, and then it's like, oh, okay, you sound like you've been playing music for 15 years. It's like, congratulations, you know? Okay, so, no, I dig that, man. That's, that's, that's super awesome. So what was the process like? Because there are a lot of people I know with master's degrees in music. Mm -hmm. What was it like at Bradley to, from like applying to like the audition basically? Um, I guess I have nothing to compare it to. That's the only sure. you know, university teaching job I've ever applied to. Mm -hmm. um, there's quite a bit of writing involved oh, just really? before you even meet in person. So okay. just getting, Documents, some of which I sort of had, but mm -hmm. 
others, but I was kind of like, I have to figure out like what my teaching philosophy is right. <laughs> and write that down. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you'll submit those kinds of documents along with references and right. um, a cover letter, which is for teaching jobs pretty mm -hmm. extensive. Really? Like what? Like what do they actually? Well, they don't. What? Well, what? What did it entail, rather? So for you. For me, mm -hmm. well, I don't have to remember what I wrote. Um, and first of all, just kind of a background of where you came from and where you are in your career, and then what you think you can offer as a teacher to mm -hmm. the university. Sure. Um, which at that point was kind of difficult for me to write because I just. I was thinking, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, how much of that bullshit? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, some of it was genuine, but very yeah. fluffed up. Oh yeah, for sure, and, for sure. Um, and then also just doing your research for the school itself, and mm -hmm. what kind of things they're doing, and right. where you can, where you think you could fit into that, but also what are some new things that you can put in? Sure. Um, so you send all that off, and then they invited me down for an interview, which is basically something that lasts all day long. Wow. Okay. So I, I drove down from Chicago. I left, I think, at like 5.30 in the morning. Mm. And I got there, and I got an hour just to kind of settle in and warm Absolutely. up. Absolutely. And the first thing yeah. I did was give a recital. Wow. And it was okay. very short, but yeah, sure. Just uh, it was open to the students, open to the public, and then all the hiring faculty were there. Wow. OK. Yeah, I was going to say, that could be uh, kind of stressful, maybe. <laughs> yeah. um, and then right after that, they had one of the current cello students come up, and then mm -hmm. basically did a mock lesson with him, which was also open for okay. everyone to watch. Wow. So they could just kind of see how yeah. I would teach. Yeah. Um, and then a series of interviews with different people in the department. Mm -hmm. um, they buy you which is really great. Oh, that's but it nice. Also yeah, that also absolutely. turns into an interview. Kind. Of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just want to see if you can hang. I guess. Yeah. 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 It, it kind of feels like if you, you know, had the experience of auditioning for a school program, it feels very similar to that. Sure. I dig. That's interesting. I didn't know it was that extensive, especially from a writing standpoint. Do you know um, how many other people you were competing against? I at no idea. Well, I'm going to say at the stage that you had gotten to as far as like doing the, um, doing like the recital portion. I, <clears throat> I could be making this up, but I think I was at the time the only one that they invited down for that. Oh so, man, you must have been impressed. You must be a good writer. Those masks are showing <laughs> off. Is that what <laughs> I, I use words very intentionally both mm. to my benefit and sometimes to my downfall. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Um, yeah, I think, I think they had the intention of wanting to hire me, but sure, just to go through the formality to make sure right. that I wasn't you know, crazy Bullshit. person. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, what what would you say is your teaching philosophy? Because having just graduated school and having been to two different schools and having been fortunate enough to learn from a lot of different people, it, it obviously everybody's thing varies, you know, and everybody's kind of goal is the same, like make you a better musician. But I realize some teachers I've had are more or less, we really may need to make you into like a business person who's a musician. And other people are more or less, I'm going to take you to the best musician possible so that you can get gigs. You know what I mean? And it's, some people are able to do both. Some people are like, I don't even know. Everybody just has, I've, I've just had so many different uh, uh, pathways being shown to me. And everybody's good in their own thing. And I also realize, depending on the genre that they're in, that teaching philosophy will be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So given the fact that you're an orchestral cellist, and I'm guessing you also do some solo work, yes? Some yeah, sort of, yeah, of course. Uh -huh. I mean, you kind of have to, you know? <laughs> but what is your philosophy as a teacher? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a big question. Um, I mean, overall, I think, one, you have to be willing to be flexible because mm -hmm. you can't put a philosophy on every single student you have. Right. It's teaching, especially in music, is very far from a one-size-fits-all kind of Absolutely. thing. Um, but along with that, I'll say that I, and I use this word with my students a lot, I'm a process-oriented teacher. Yes. And 
I say that as opposed to a product oriented teacher. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to teach my students how to problem solve and how to practice. Yes. If they also become really good cellists in the process, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if we, we tackle that process oriented kind of approach to music and approach to life even, right. the product will be great. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, I one of my favorite things to do is to break things up into as many steps as possible. And you're kind of just saying this with, okay, if I just practice these like four beats and Absolutely. figure it out. Absolutely. <laughs> just loop it for 30 right. minutes if you have to. Yeah. Um, and I once <laughs> did this exercise with one of my students just to kind of show them ways that they could break things up. And I just asked them, you mm -hmm. know, how do you order a pizza? Which yeah. Of course, he yeah. <laughs> looked at me like I had three heads, which they often do. Right, right. Um, and his answer was, "Will you order a pizza?" Right. But if you accurately break that up, mm -hmm. you can. I mean, you can put a hundred steps into ordering a pizza. You, you can, can figure out, you know, where am I going to get it from? Mm -hmm. Thin crust, thick crust. Chicago, New York. Absolutely. Leave that open there. <laughs> right, 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 right. You gotta find your phone. Right. So there's all these steps, and if we as teachers can help our students look at those different steps in music. Mm -hmm. um, I think we give them tools to be able to do what they want to do mm -hmm. rather than, okay, I'm going to teach you how to play this way really well. Right. And they might develop that skill mm -hmm. really extensively, but then that's the only skill they have. That is very interesting. <laughs> that is very interesting. So I'm glad I brought up before you said that the fact uh, of what you're, what you're going to be doing. Because if your desire is to be a concert cellist or orchestral cellist, maybe it's best to just figure out how to do that. You know what right. I mean? Because there aren't a whole lot of jobs. You know what I mean? Like there aren't, you know, whoa. Right. <laughs> there are places that will allow you to come play. There aren't a whole lot of places that will pay you a living wage to right. do that thing and to yeah. get better at that thing. You know, a lot I, of the jobs I have are paying me a living wage. I, I understand, <laughs> that. I understand <laughs> that completely. So, <laughs> so like, so I, I, one thing I'm learning now is I, I understand the value in those people who do have the blindness who's just like, no, I'm just gonna cut through everything mm -hmm. and just be the best I'm going to play all the right notes and I'm going to learn how to blend with the second players and listen yeah, to the yeah. first, you know, the concert master, you know, that that thing. But I also am finding that if you if that's all you can do, man, it's just hard as fuck to eat and live and have heat <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the winter, you know, like and for you guys it's just different, man. Like where are where are all the cello gigs? You know what I'm saying? Like what is that? I I mean it, it's a little bit of a, you know, like the choose your own adventure books. Yeah, absolutely. That's what being a freelance mm. musician, musician really. feels yeah, like. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I've got lots of different adventures that I mm -hmm. piece together. Right. To be able to eat. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And a lot of them are, you know, these regional orchestras. So, I think just this season alone, I've been somewhat regularly playing with six different orchestras. Wow. Um, and then teaching on top of mm -hmm. that, and then you know, a couple solo gigs, got right. four chamber groups. Wow! So I mean, there's there's wow. a lot going on. It is a lot going on here right now. If you were to piece that all together, you might call it a full time job, but right. <laughs> none of those things individually are right. full time or sustainable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a lot of uh, you kind of actively have to be seeking out or making your own right work. right so seeking your own work like creating creating your gigs because one thing i learned is that no matter how well i play or sometimes even don't play you know i mean yeah. not playing well will definitely not get you calls but like no matter how well i play that does not guarantee you a callback absolutely which is odd to me because I've always been told like practice people will call you, yeah. which is absolutely true. It's so absolutely true. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But you know, 
I heard this from like older musicians, right? Like being on gigs or whatever. And it's like, yeah, you also got to be a good hang too. You know what I'm saying? Which is sort of like counterintuitive to like a normal workplace. It's like, yeah, just be good at your job. You know what I mean? And you'll get further. But like with our gig, it's so communal and it's so word of mouth. It's like, oh yeah, Sarah can really play and she's cool as hell. And if somebody doesn't say that, it's like, Right. Do I want yeah. do I, do I to hire you? Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Is it, I know playing like jazz, funk, blues, more commercial stuff, that's a really big thing. It's a really big thing. Is it the same for you guys pretty much? There's definitely some of that. Um, <clears throat> I think it's, maybe the word we would use is professionalism. So sure, like, yeah. sure, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fancy <laughs> Right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. I so, think and yeah, certainly, I think once you get to a point where you're playing with some of these groups and you know, working around some of these other people, mm -hmm. the fact that you can play is assumed. You wouldn't be there if you couldn't Absolutely. play. Absolutely. So you're not going to prove anything by being able to play. Like, right. Great, you did your job. Mm -hmm. And so the the way that we would guarantee or hope for more work is to make an impression some other way by right. you know, being a decent human being. Right, <laughs> right. It's pretty essential. Um, yeah. Yeah, and just being courteous to your colleagues and Sure. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of our way of applying for jobs. Yes, yeah, definitely. You know, a lot of the work that I get are we all, we all have our secret, like, gig forwarding lists. Sure, when absolutely. Gig, can't do it. Absolutely, yeah. Um, the, you you want to do what you can to be on people's gig forwarding lists. For sure, for sure. So, yeah. Playing well is like the bare minimum, but. You're right. <laughs> God, that's so. Like I said, <laughs> it's so counterintuitive to like normal work life. It's just mm -hmm. like, yeah, if you're the best, then you get promoted. Supposedly, but yeah. So I know the answer to this, but for young people out there and the millions of viewers I'm getting, you're out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are some of the things that, from a non-playing standpoint, really help you stand out? Like, what are those building blocks of professionalism that you would say? Oof. I mean, the, I think the number one basic thing is be on time. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, no one likes to wait. In Absolutely. music or otherwise. Absolutely. So just, yeah, timeliness with showing up, with communication, mm -hmm. being good at emails is very helpful. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Even just, you know, using good grammar and punctuation, people notice that. They do. Um, and then when you're actually, I mean, for me, when I'm sitting in an orchestra, you don't do a whole lot of talking. You don't. In an orchestra. Absolutely. And Especially if the cello player, you're right next to the, the the conductor. Yeah. Yeah. And there's just not that much to talk about. There is, you know what? <laughs> Honestly, as a bone player who sits in the back, there's a lot of snickering that kind of goes yeah. on because a lot of our parts, it's not uncommon to get like 18 measures of rest and then like play a little yeah. thing and then be out again. You guys are not afforded that. You know what no, I mean? We but like play all the time. All the time, and it's so crazy. But like, no, you're right. There isn't a whole lot to do. Um, yeah, so even, even just when you do talk mm -hmm. to your colleagues, just mm -hmm. being conscious of how you're talking and what you're talking about. No one likes sure. complainers. Definitely. Um, Definitely. Or gossipers. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you just being aware of how you're holding yourself and sure. aware of others. I mean, Absolutely. No. It's like... Normal human being stuff. Yeah, I feel I <laughs> feel a conscious, a conscientious person. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. That's all. That's all real. Mm -hmm. That's all real. Uh, I also find that doing for me uh, because I don't have a particularly great memory. Like I don't know why that is, but I just don't. But like knowing as much about the music as possible mm -hmm. before I get there right. really helps. Because sometimes I get. I mean, my job's 
as a freelance ball player, it's a little bit differently. So sometimes, sometimes people will give me stuff. Like you can pretty much find a recording of every, like even somewhat significant like orchestral piece that's ever been oh, written. Yeah. So you can like it's on either IMSLP or it's on YouTube or something like that. But like sometimes I get parts and it's like something that a guy like handwritten out. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, well, what the fuck does this sound like? What does this even sound yeah. like? You know. So like. For me, I found like asking questions about, okay, you know, uh, maybe e and this goes to the email thing, kind of, oh man, well, like, what, 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 what was this? You know what I mean? Like, what were you listening to when, when, when you were kind of feeling it? So at the very least, I have something else to compare it to, you know, like, we're all drawing inspiration from somewhere, you know what I mean? And sometimes you can tell by looking at the music, but sometimes you can't, especially if you get into, into some of the contemporary stuff. Yeah. And that's when it kind of gets back to you guys as in on some of the more contemporary music and some of the weird shit that is happening <laughs> out there, man. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna take a quick break and we're gonna come back and we're gonna finish talking to Sarah. What's up guys, we're back. I got Miss Sarah Hansen here with me, the cellist extraordinaire. P are you still playing with the Peoria Symphony? No. So you're not? She was too good for him anyway. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> I didn't say it. Yeah, I said, I said, I said. So we left off talking about contemporary classical music, which I don't know if I like that term, contemporary classical music. Uh, some people call it art music. Some people. It's a very vague term. It is a, it is a very vague term because everybody writes differently. Mm -hmm. And we're in a space now, if you guys haven't been hip to it, uh, everybody has their own unique notation. Right. There's still obviously the very standard, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G with the five lines and the four spaces. Right. And we have the, the various clefs, but now people are creating their own clefs. They have their own proto notation. Yes. It is the fucking wild west <laughs> of music. I imagine this is how people felt when jazz exactly. first came around. Exactly. Yeah. They're probably like, what the fuck is jazz? You know what I mean? Like, why is everybody playing at the same time? What is happening right now? You know, but like, you guys, I have seen a lot of these scores. And when I first started getting them forced down my throat, I was instantly resistant to it because none of it made sense to me. I felt like I had to relearn music all over again. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. It's the, yes. So, but I've come around to the uniqueness of it, and also I am beginning to understand as well as appreciate the significance of what's happening right now in contemporary music. Let's just call it contemporary music okay. because contemporary classical music puts it in a box that maybe everybody doesn't understand. Sure. I think I even know. the term classical music is. You know what? <laughs> classical music is like to smooth jazz. What like it? You know, it's like oh, people say classical when they're like strings. If they had right. strings music, yeah. it was classical music. Not knowing that there are like eras and right. people within and those people eras. People forget that classical music covers like five hundred years. <laughs> at least, so, at least, you know. Yeah. So that is even talk about like the two, three hundred years, like of medieval music and right. whatnot. That leads to the classical music, man. So yeah, I feel like everything post Bach with strings is classical music to to the masses. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, what was your experience like the first time you started seeing some of this new music? Um, I think similar to what you just said, a little bit of resistance. Yeah. Right? This is especially being in a music performance program, mm -hmm. you kind of have this mindset, like almost this self-righteous mindset, like I spent so long yes. learning to play my instrument this right. way and reading the music, and now you're asking me to do something totally different. And um, it's it's challenging yeah. because it's you feel like you've mm -hmm. never played before, never seen right. music before. Right, 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 right. Um, but I've also come around, and I think it's it's kind of a fun new frontier that mm -hmm. composers and performers get to collaborate and explore together. Right, right. Um, and even if you think back to classical music, mm -hmm. some of those people that we think is of being very, you know, kosher or, you know, easygoing, right. yeah. were actually 
you know, pretty controversial at the time. So like well, Beethoven was like, absolutely, oh, yeah, exactly. It's like, what the fuck <laughs> what are you do? doing? Yeah, it's like, um, who do you think you are? You know, absolutely. And, you oh know, my God. People through riots. Yeah. yeah man. So I think we're we have to remember that those pioneers of those times. Now we are. We're starting to experience a new generation of pioneers, and right. the reaction to their music is mm-hmm. might be similar. Probably, I, I would agree with that. Because mm-hmm. the first time I heard some of this stuff, I was like, "Just turn that shit off." <laughs> I'm not into. I'm and not like, interested. Some of it is bad. <laughs> you know what? I feel like. I feel like. Oh man. Okay, I'm about to say something kind of fucked up. I feel like what's happening in that music, to some degree. And I'm only saying this because you said something that I agree with, that some of it is bad, you know what I mean? And whenever you're doing something new, you're going to have, there are going to be casualties. You know what I'm saying? Probably a lot more casualties. Absolutely. 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 But like, when, when, when music is taken over by academia, and I feel like that's sort of how we've gotten to this place. It's not always a it's not always a bad thing. Let me just say that it's not all bad, okay? But when that happens, right? Smart people turn music into into engineering. And there are, let's talk about some benefits to that. One, when you engineer something, right? You make it fast, you make it efficient, you know how to create like very specific moods. You can make one minute of really great music for uh, um, TV and movies and things like that, right? It, when you have the formulas, you can plug and play a lot faster. Sure. But then when it goes from engineering to like physics, which I feel like, like especially like theoretical physics, mm-hmm. which is what I feel like some of this music is turning into, mm-hmm. it loses like the basic essence of what I think music was always... For and it's music has always been like either for ceremonies or for like parties, which okay. means it's for it's for people to consume. Okay. And I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, but like I feel like most of this stuff <laughs> is like an intellectual circle jerk for like academics. You know what I'm saying? Some of it is absolutely. Yeah, and I I hate I hate to say that because as educated people ourselves. <laughs> We're in that class of people, whether oh, yeah. we agree with it or not, we're there. So I'm literally talking shit about myself in a way. But, like, it's like, man, yo, like, do y'all realize, like, no one wants to hear this shit? And that's why 20 people yeah. are at, like, this concert. And maybe you don't care. And I appreciate, like, that mindset. I really do. But, like, I don't know that, I don't know that music was ever supposed to be that. You know what I mean? And that's how I feel about a lot of jazz music that's out right now. It's like there are guys playing like 30 second note runs, you know what I mean, for like six choruses. And I'm just like, man, it's taking the crowd out of the music. It's like, yeah, everything you're doing is so cool. And I I love it. But like people are like hitting the snooze button. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I just said a lot, but like yeah. how do you how do you, like, just react to what I just said? Sure. Whether you agree or disagree, I whatever. You, I mean, you brought up the ultimate question of what is music mm-hmm. and what is the purpose of music. Right. Um, and we all have, especially as professional musicians, our own opinions about yes. what that is. Yes, So there's definitely a side of contemporary music now that is very academic, mm-hmm. and it's almost written for, like, research purposes. Yes! Like, oh. how much... Like science and physics, can I stuff into this piece? Right, right. Um, and if you're, you know, educated enough to be able to understand the process mm-hmm. that goes into that, it's really interesting. Sometimes it is. It's like, it is. This is cool. I could put it under a microscope and like, mm-hmm. oh, look at all the like little bacteria on it. And it's right, like, right. No, you're one hundred percent right. Um, and I mean, I'm still a nerd. I'm a more confident nerd than I was in high school. Sure, like, for sure. Sometimes, sometimes I come across those pieces and when you kind of see the way that it was put together, like, oh, that's like pretty cool. It's badass, um, yeah. Would I want to listen to it? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? I'm sorry, you, have you ever been like or seen like those like uh, 
like science lecture conventions and there's like this really <laughs> smart guy in the room full yeah. of smart guys. He's like, well, this is how I came to this conclusion. And everybody's just like, hmm, yeah, that's really cool. And that's what it feels like because right. I was very fortunate to, you know, be in, in, in academic spaces like where there are people who have spent hours figuring this stuff out. And I'm just like, I, I don't know that I would have came to those conclusions on my own, either because I'm not smart enough or because there's a level of apathy that would have set in like 40 minutes into like looking at this score, you know what I mean? Right. And some of these scores are beautiful, not that they're making them to be a work of art, but it's like, holy shit. Some of them actually shit. are. Yeah, some of them are, are, exactly. But like, see, and that just goes to sort of what like we're talking about, like what the fuck is actually going on here? But you're right, I'm looking at it and I'm, I'm enthralled by the people that have taken the time to figure it out. Yeah. But like, man, do I ever want to listen to this? And if you're just writing music for other academics, then I guess that's okay. Yeah, you know? I, you, I think you have to be aware of what your purpose is for sure. music. So I think there's definitely a place for that kind of very academic music. Mm -hmm. And there are certainly you know, composers in that realm that they've said, I don't care if people like this and I don't care if people mm -hmm. listen. You know, if that's your jam, right. fine. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but I think for some of the tension and resistance lies in classical music or contemporary classical music right now is we have people writing music that's highly academic and mm -hmm. very hard to digest. Yes. Even though it's really quite visionary. Yes. And then throwing it at audiences with no explanation and expecting them to just take it in. Yes. That's not gonna happen. Right. Um and you know I don't think we should say well audiences aren't smart enough to get this because sure. if you sat down and showed I think the average person kind of a process they'd be like, oh yeah, that is cool. Yeah. yeah. And I then agree. they might actually want to listen to right, it. Right, right. Um, but I think one of the mistakes that performers and you know orchestras are making are just programming this very strange contemporary music on concerts for the sake of saying that they did that. Right. And then just expecting the audience to be like, well yes. Yeah, right, 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 right. Um, so for me, I mean, I play some, I play quite a bit of contemporary music, and some of it's real strange. Mm -hmm. And like one of the orchestras that I play with somewhat regularly is the Chicago Composers Orchestra. Mm, I've heard of it. And yeah. they, their mission is to play music by living composers, yes. especially Chicago area composers. Yeah. We're not generally getting you know, just the average concert goer in those right. concerts. There right. are people that are aware of the new music scene in mm -hmm. Chicago and are interested in hearing what's out there. Right. Um, and then for myself, whenever I'm programming a solo concert, a contemporary piece, my standard for that is either has to be something that I feel like the audience will enjoy and connect with sort of on a human level right or something that i can i have to talk about and sort of explain right. like this is the i'm a very context oriented person so like yes. this is where this piece came out of and then play it and give them the tools they need to connect with it right but i don't, don't want to just like throw bricks of contemporary right. music at them mm -hmm. you know i i agree with you well i agree with what you just said but for the sake of our brethren out there who are fighting the good fight, I think it is important to also like lay on the other the the the, the their position. And I was told by somebody who has a doctorate in music, and I think this person is extremely brilliant. I just respect the hell out of them. One thing that they said was people who put on those concerts. And I believe he was part of that uh, Chicago um, composers. composers. Yeah, I was, he said, we don't program this music thinking that the regular Joe Schmo is gonna show up. We, we know what this is. Right. And on some level, there's something extremely romantic about that. You know what I mean? It's like, you know what? I'm doing this because this is what I wanna do. I'm writing this for my friends, you know, and people in that collective, they're, their friends or what, you know, there's, there's very few degrees of separation, you know, in the music world, period. Especially when you like localize it to a city, you know, and as big as this city is, most people know everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there aren't a whole lot of rungs you gotta get to before you kinda, 
either know that person or know somebody that knows that person. You know, and this is even at the highest level. You know, I can call somebody that can call Ricardo Muti. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which that's saying a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that dude is over the best orchestra in the world. If you ask some people, you know. So I I I can really appreciate people who are like, fuck it, I am going to make this because I enjoy it and because you know, like we're on the cutting edge. And I'm sure if you talk to some scientists, right, and they're like. What it what what good is this machine you're making? Maybe I can't use it right now. Right. But maybe in a hundred years you'll have the computer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe you'll have a cell phone and GPS and you'll have cars that can like detect bumps in the road, make your ride smoother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All of these things. And I'm like, as somebody who does I'm not great at math, I do appreciate math, but I do love science, you know. Right. It's like, yeah, man, I get it. I get it. And I'm glad that they're doing this work. But God damn. You know, I'm just like, you know, throw me a ball, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, throw us, throw, throw the people a ball. Once again, I, if you give me five minutes and you give me a, a quick description of what you're going to do, you know what I mean? Either you put it in, like, the program notes or something. Something. Yeah. Cool. You know? But, like, like I said, my mom, who knows a little something about music, or, like... Some guy's mom, if she comes out, I don't, I don't want her to be like, yeah, we're leaving right at intermission. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't want that to happen. You know what I'm saying? So, right. I don't. And know. I think there's one we have to give the audience the benefit of the doubt that sure. they have the ability to connect with this music or not. Right. Um, and one way is like sometimes if we just give permission people to like listen and have some sort of reaction without the pressure of, oh, you have to understand right, music. Right, right. Or we allow them the space to understand it or the information to understand mm -hmm. it. That's going to create connections better than if we're just like, well, come if you do understand. Right. <laughs> Stay away if you don't. Right. I actually think there are, I mean, classical, you refer to classical music as being like in the canon of, there's a reason that Beethoven is still being played and Absolutely. Play. Like, Absolutely. The music gets put into this giant canon of pieces that are programmed because people like them. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there are three steps into that happening. One starts with the composer writing whatever they're going to write. Right. And then the second step is the performer. My philosophy as a performer is that I don't necessarily get to have too much an opinion of an opinion of what should or shouldn't be played right um, that's a very interesting point to make. so and everyone's gonna have a different answer but I will attempt to play pretty much anything at least once okay I like that um, attempt mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there are certainly things that I would program more or play more or be more enthusiastic about but right I think my job as a performer is to sort of aggressively create the space for music to be heard. Yes. Regardless of my opinions on it or where it's coming from mm -hmm. or who's writing it. And then the third step are, is the audience. Mm -hmm. So the audience gets to decide, is this worth listening to? Do I connect with it? And if all those three things happen, then it kind of gets put in the can where it ends up being around 100 years later. Yes. I think some of the music that's being written now, especially, and not even now, but you know, mm -hmm. the last couple hundred years, yeah. forgets the third step. Mm, I Which agree. Is, okay, you sure. can write something, and right. people might play it, and people might listen to it. Mm -hmm. But it might end there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I no, you're right. You're right. I guess. I guess. If you're living a normal life and you have six jobs as a freelance musician slash teacher, that you don't have the time to think about that shit sometimes, you know. No. You know, it's, it's <laughs> when like I, play orchestra, I play what I am told to play, and I right. play it the way that I'm told to play. Right. I understand. I understand. That requires a lot of to not do that requires a lot of mental and emotional investment that you may not have at that particular right. rehearsal yeah. or at that particular show. It's like, dude, I'm here to play and get yeah. GTFO. <laughs> Absolutely. So I guess the other side of not doing the new stuff and not pushing the boundaries is you have pop music, you know, and, you know, 
I'm hypercritical of pop music. Hypercritical as a very snooty ass musician, you know, and I will readily admit that. Mm -hmm. Snooty as fuck, you know, and it's, it's especially in comparison to what I'm hearing on the radio. I hear people SoundCloud sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And I I get it. You want to make things that people enjoy and things that people kind of get with, you know what I'm saying? It's why um, a lot of people program the blues and like a lot of their concerts or, you know, one, four, five happens in a lot of music yep. because we can instantly recognize it. It's uh -huh. safe, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. okay, I know where home is, you know? So I I get it. I get it and I, I appreciate it. However, some of this shit for me is like, you know what, man? It's like everybody's literally copying the same thing, you know, that they just heard. And it's like, there's like no exploration. You know what I'm saying? It, I feel like all of the artwork happens in post for pop music. You know what I mean? And I, I'm not saying there aren't amazing singers making great songs, singing great over songs. Mm -hmm. All of them. Yes, I meant first, <laughs> first time too. I meant that too. Yeah, I, I got to be careful because I don't, you know, I just, I just, I just want to be careful because I don't want to shit on anybody that's out there like taking chances. Right. But uh, it's almost, it's over, it's not almost, it's over formulated and it has been for quite a while now. You know what I mean? Like, it just has been. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's hard for me to get with, man. And I guess if we don't have the contemporary stuff happening, we have what we're hearing now and I don't know how you feel about it but like most of it I just can't listen to. Yeah, I don't listen to a lot of pop music mm -hmm. in general. Um, I think I'm, I feel like kind of the opposite where most people are like, yeah, I put on classical music for the background, mm -hmm. studying music so I can focus. Right. I put, if I'm like looking for background music, I'll put on pop music. <laughs> I think I do too. Yeah. I think I, I do too. I can zone out. Yeah, for me, classical music is like, just yeah, exactly. Like I'm being all analytical. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Well, I gotta, I gotta repeat it now. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? You're right. You're right. No, I feel the same way, man. I feel the same way. It's yeah. It's 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 dangerous, man. Like I, once again, like I said, I don't I don't want to be overly critical of the stuff because it's what's getting played and people are doing it, and I may even travel into that world a little bit. You know what I'm okay, saying? Me too. But goddamn, I don't want. I don't know if I could. Maybe I could if I intentionally tried to. But if I just made it a pop tune, mm -hmm. it would probably have too much music stuffed inside of it. You know what I mean? Because like, pop to me is like a very nice box, and it's wrapped in like this super nice wrapping paper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it like is a pretty box. it is a yeah. pretty box. It's like oh my god, you got the perfect amount of auto tune. You got yeah. like the perfect amount of like uh, automation. You know, it's like. I don't know. I feel like the the same like uh, like verses are about the same amount of bars. You know what I mean? It's right. like, oh man, here comes the chorus. Yes, you know what I'm saying. It's like this is exactly what I wanted. But I don't know. I've tried to do it, and it ended up just sounding like jazz. You know, with like a backbeat. It's just like yeah. all right, you know. So I don't know. I mean, I've certainly done it with, like you know when some pop songs want like some backup strings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I man. That makes everything more cultured. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It's like, oh man, it's classier now. Yeah, I don't have, I don't know, I don't have any like hard feelings towards pop music. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, full circle here, it sure. goes back to the, for me, I make connections to music in the process. Sure. And pop music is a product. Mm -hmm. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's an art product. And I think a lot of the classical music that I've, Perform or player, even the stuff that's being written now, it's there's so much in the process of actually making the music. Yes. And there is in pop music as well, but not a lot of that process goes into the music and the sound itself. Yes. I agree. So, I agree. And the, I think the goal of it is to sell. Mm hmm. Oh, man. That goes back to our point is like, what is your, like, what are you doing with music? Yeah. You and if, I mean, if your goal is to like sell, an album and mm -hmm. have really successful sales then great you know what you're doing though. absolutely that's not my goal yeah. <laughs> it's so isn't that kind of retarded though it's like for us 
because I do want to make money, right? Yeah, totally. But I'm not desperate to make money, and I'm not just in like the like sales business. Right. You know what I mean? That's why I've never really done well with any sales job I've ever had because I'm like, well, if you don't need it, okay, you know. Right. But it's like, yeah, it's like, you you should, your money. yeah, don't don't buy it. It's like, you know, it's like, no, no, that's not how we do business here. Mm -hmm. But like, we want people to appreciate the stuff that we're doing, and the only yeah. way you can do that is to like put it out there and sometimes you have to like tone it back you know what i'm saying like the things you want to do it was you also want to make it like super musical i guess there's this sweet spot there's the sweet spot of like musicality and like connectability right. and sales while also like not being like a totally commercialized version of like the person you were in college you know what i'm saying oh whatever like you know because like the sell it out thing is real i don't know if it's like actually real but internally it is it's like oh you know, I'm not even making like real music anymore. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I don't know, man. There, there is a sweet spot. I don't. I, I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah. Right Have you ever heard of the three M's? What is that? Okay, so we have. I have, and some of the people that I've worked with, a way of gauging how worthwhile a gig is, basically. Mm, okay. And it's the three M's. So you've got music, right? Money, right? And mates. Oh, I like so that. like, okay, is the is the music kind of, the kind of stuff that you connect with or you like, right. really enjoy playing? Um, you know, it's going to be a good, like, artistic experience. Sure. And like, how much does it pay? <laughs> right, of course, man. Um, which I got to drive to the gig. Right. And maybe to right. a rehearsal, like, too. Yeah. How much time am I spending here? And mm -hmm. what other things I'm going to have to let go of to do this? And right. And like, people make a difference, you know? They do. There are some people that I will never name names, but... Right. Unless you're offering me a huge paycheck, I yeah. will not play with them. I understand that. Um, so, I mean, in a perfect world, you have like a 3M gig all the time. Yes. Good music, good money, right. good people. Right. But I think it's especially for people who are just graduating from, mm -hmm. you know, with music degrees, you don't ever want a 0M gig. So <laughs> don't play shitty music oh, that man. doesn't pay well yeah. with people you don't like. Yeah. So, you know, start, if you can get a gig, it's like, oh, this is really good music. Right. But it's a passion project. Like, Absolutely. I'm not making anything. Right, right, There's right. some, they're, like, some of the best concerts I've ever played. Like, this was awesome. I want to do it again. And then if I do the math as to how much I actually made, mm. it's like 10 cents an hour. Yes. <laughs> that, some of that stuff. Man, so much of that stuff happens, man. And it's, it's so, it's so depressing because... You're right, the best gigs I've ever been on were with people I like, with really great music. And yeah. a lot of times I think about the money lasts, you know what I mean? And maybe yeah. I, maybe there was a rehearsal or two that I didn't get paid for, or wasn't really worked into like the overall mm -hmm. deal. And you go and you have this amazing fucking time, and mm -hmm. the crowd is really digging it, and then afterwards you're like, man, that actually just happened. But you're right, right you look at it, and sometimes, if you like ate during the gig, like either before or after, you actually like, fuck, I think I lost money <laughs> doing this. Yeah. And it's like, how the hell did this happen, yeah. man? But so, yeah, that's a real thing. Yeah. God. And you know, there there's a time and a place for like gigs that don't pay mm -hmm. what you need them to pay. Absolutely. But if it's going to be that, if it's going to be a passion project, right. everyone has to be in on calling it Absolutely. Like, this is what this is. Right. I do not support whatsoever gigs that are just paid badly. Mm. Like I understand. Yeah. I <laughs> and understand. If I get you know an email from someone trying to hire me for something, and be like, we're gonna you know pay twenty five dollars for the concert. Like, no. If you Am would I, like me to volunteer my time, right? We can right, talk about that. Right. 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 But twenty five. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Don't. I've done plenty of twenty five dollar, fifty dollar oh, gigs. We all have. Yeah, yeah. I have done, but I, I generally just call it the fifty dollar gig. Like you know what I mean. But I've I done. I can buy like two weeks of groceries out of twenty. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I have it's, to. Right. Right. Um, yeah, but you've got to. You have to call it what it is. Yes. Um, and then of course people like there are people that I'd play a free gig with any time of the year. Absolutely. Because they're just. They're probably my friends at that yeah. point. Yeah, it's yeah. like oh yeah, I got you, bro. What time? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, as you do. But yeah, of course. And that's the the very fine line. I don't even know 
they call it, line, like the little disc that you have to balance on mm-hmm. where you're making a passion into a, a career choice. Yes. And just, okay, what part of this is still passion, hopefully all of it, but mm-hmm. like, but also mm-hmm. I need to actually make money. Absolutely. So as you move up in the world and you might get to 2M gigs. Yes. Like, once you get to 2Ms, you shouldn't go back to 1. <laughs> you shouldn't, man. <laughs> Unless you really like that right. person, you know what yeah. I mean? It's, that's the balance you're talking about again. It's like, man, this dude, he, he's going to be like in my two M gigs later. So it's like, I got him. Or one of my like friends said, we should help this person out. It's like, no, man, this is like, you know, he's or got some hip stuff yeah, going on. Yeah, this one M gig might lead to a two M gig. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. But everyone, we covet the like three M gigs. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. Absolutely, <laughs> man. We got to get there. We got to get there. I'm going to take one more break, and I want to get into the stuff you got planned. Okay. And we can talk about that, and then I'm going to go get a coffee and then start editing some videos. Sounds good. All right? Cool. Okay. All right, guys. We're back at the Artisan Podcast. I have Miss Sarah Hansen here. Extraordinaire. Uh, Again, um, we left off talking about the things that you want to do. In the future, you you have a lot of skill sets. It seems like, and you have a lot of dreams and aspirations, musically and otherwise. Yeah. What are some of those things? Um. Whew. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I think my I mean my ultimate goal is just to keep learning. I mm-hmm. mean, I don't I don't want to get to a point where I feel like oh yeah I'm comfortable. Yeah. I'm, I'm good at this. Mm-hmm. If I feel like, oh, I'm good at what I do, then I need to like <laughs> start branching Oh, for out. sure, absolutely. So, I mean, more tangibly, I am in the process of trying to go get a doctorate. Oh, man. Where are you looking? Do you have any uh, idea yet? I, I do. I, I mean, I applied to some schools last year, mm-hmm. and I decided that I didn't want to write a check for a doctorate, so I <laughs> just decided to keep doing yeah, it. Yeah, I, 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 I get it. So I... I applied to another one, the University of Iowa, mm-hmm. this year. Okay. Just in that fun spot mm-hmm. that we've, anyone who's applied to college has been just right. waiting. Yeah. So what you know, What would your doctorate be? Do you have any idea what that would be? What it would be in? Yeah. Um, like, so I think it depends at the school. I think Iowa, they say it's in literature and pedagogy. So it would be like in music, in mm-hmm cello would be the emphasis but it's a much more academic degree right right writing some papers doing mm-hmm. some research um, but also you know playing right it's, right it's, it's a very unique fusion of two I think what people consider to be very different worlds sure like absolutely artistic performance and like academic research mm-hmm. <laughs> how those two go together um, and I'd have to kind of see where that goes, but I'm very interested in, I was talking about the classical canon before, Mm -hmm. going back in time a little bit and finding some of the music that wasn't, was never performed or never put into that canon because of like socioeconomic reasons or, you know, just all the different restrictions that were put on what music was allowed to be performed right um bringing that back up Mm -hmm. and then also the idea of just context in music Mm -hmm. and what having an idea of like history or how things were written can affect how people perform or listen to them Mm -hmm. so it's like my nerdy side (laughs) no that's fine i love it i love all of that yeah yeah um but also just working on different projects. I mean, I play in a lot of orchestras, but right. that's more of a practical thing. Mm-hmm. I got out of school, just like, oh, how I, where can I go to play my cello and also get a check? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, um, but one of the things I'm doing now is applying to a artist in residence program at a national park in Hawaii. Oh, which one? I lived in Hawaii for three years. Did you? I did. Uh, at the Hawaii Volcanoes National. I don't think I've ever been there. Oh, yeah. okay. I haven't been to the big island. I've been to a bunch of other ones, but not that one. Interesting. Yeah. Um, That's cool. Wait, what would you be doing there? Like, what that is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'd be part of the residency, and um, 
doing it, applying with a, another friend and colleague of mine. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what we'd be doing is just kind of going and exploring the park and the culture there. And okay. Just like making music about yeah. it, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. And, and All right. Yeah, sort of being involved with the community in a performance yeah. capacity. Hawaii is a mess. I, ho I hope you get it. Hawaii is a mess. <laughs> Me too. Place. I, I, I have, because of the nature of my job when I was there, I had a very like love-hate relationship with that place. But like the love relationship part of that place is like, it's everything that you think it is. You know what I mean? Okay. It's it's great weather literally year round. Yeah, it's always eighty degrees and sunny. Being in Chicago right now. Yeah. It sounds great. Yes. It is. Everything about it sounds great. It is. It is great. It is yeah. great. And like the worst thing that happens is like the raining season, which is basically winter. But it doesn't even rain that much. It's like not that bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like the people are great. The beaches are phenomenal. There are some places like where you can literally see like 100 feet down. You can see like it is so it is it's it's a magical place. It is a magical place. So, you know, and they have all the regular creature comforts, which I didn't expect when I first got there, that you would have in a, any suburbanized, like, industrial neighborhood, hmm. you know? So, yeah, like, go to Honolulu, do all that stuff, go to all the islands. Yeah. Yeah, just totally. do it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I hope I mean, both of the things, like, this doctoral program and this residency yeah. are, like, totally more likely to not work out. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's I'll, like, I'll, I'll make some calls. Like, I'll make some calls down there, yeah. I think the nature of being a freelance musician or really a musician of any kind is mm -hmm. like there's a lot of risk involved. Oh, the fuck yeah. Yeah, and just yeah. my mantra of the light is like you just gotta try. <laughs> you do, man. Just like you do show up. Yeah. Like, that so. is I think the more stuff that I do and like the higher level of gigs that I get and mm -hmm. the sort of the more expectation that's put on me as a performance yes. teacher, the lower the expectations for myself have to be. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Like in school, it was like this, you know, recital has to be perfect, or mm -hmm. like this competition has to be perfect. Right. And now, if I'm going to an audition, just like just walk in the door, and that is enough. Mm, and yeah. all of the expectations go into the practice part. Right. Right. No, I. That's a good mindset to have, almost, man. It t it takes the pressure off you. Mm -hmm. You know, not that you're gonna play any worse. You know, it's just like, all right, well, this is a part of the process. You yeah. Know? Boy, that's interesting. I don't do that. I go in and like, I'm like, oh, I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I try to just say, just show up. Of course sure, I of course that's not what it is. Yeah, of course. <laughs> like, I kind of, this would be great. This would be great to, like, you know, get this check. You know? Yeah. No, I, I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. So, uh, I'm assuming getting a, 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 a doctorate for you means that maybe teaching is a thing? Yeah. For you in the I really like teaching. Okay. Um, very challenging mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I think I'd like to be able to teach sort of in the university realm full-time mm -hmm. okay not because I want to be an academic sure but because I think that's where a lot of performers develop their sort of life skills and their goals sure um, right now I think we are developing skills in sort of a conservatory setting that are not necessarily useful in the cohesive sense. Yes. Like, I came out of school being able to play really well. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I discussed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. That's like a, a skill that you have to have, but mm -hmm. that's not gonna make you a career in music. No, it is not. There are a lot of talented people out here. Yeah. I have I don't I can't prove this, but I'm sure that we have this is the most there are more talented people in music walking the earth right now than there have ever been at any point in time. Ever. Yeah. And, and it's I just gonna continue only to that, do that. But yeah. There's so many ways to be visible as being skilled and talented. Yes. Um, before people had to actually show up to your concerts. Mm-hmm. And now you've got like YouTube, you've got all right. these like America's Got Talent and whatever, and yeah. people like putting on their own content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, putting a video on YouTube 
requires a lot more than just being really good at what you do. Facts. You have to be interesting. Yeah. You know. To be interesting, you have to like have some knowledge of technology that wasn't invented in the 16th century. Right. Right. Um, it's. You it's know a what? Whole different level. Of it is. Sets. I I think that. Whatever music schools exist, some sort of music business has to just be automatically built into the program nowadays. Because yeah. if you don't, man, I just don't think you can eat. I, I, I just no. don't because, you know, well, let's just say it. People live longer. And if you get an orchestral job, people, the, the good ones, obviously they open up, obviously. But they never really open up. Not no. really. People don't leave those jobs. You know, like, <laughs> You're what? You're right. They just. <laughs> you right, they die. It's like, um, and you could play at a high level into your seventies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, well it's, it depending on the job. If it's a less physical thing, especially if you're like a a, a a bassist, and like all you have to do is stand there and like <laughs> like play the right notes. Like holy shit, man! Which you know, it's very hard to do. It's, it's, oh, yeah. big big up to those people. <laughs> big up to those people. But at the same time. But also there are a lot of people that can do that. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, even just walking around Chicago, like when you walk around Chicago with a cello on your back, people yeah. like want to talk to you. They do, I've noticed. Um, it's a conversation starter. I am not naturally a person that wants to start conversations with really anyone. Sure. Um, so I sort of, depending on the day, will mm -hmm. talk to people. <laughs> Sometimes. I'm one of those people that like watch oh around Chicago God. with headphones in and nothing sure. playing. Just to sure. Pull I understand. I but understand. It's it's almost always like one of two conversations. Either like someone wanting to share their really unique original pun mm -hmm. or joke about cellos. So like, have you got a dead body in there? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've never like, heard that one before. The 300th person that I've heard that from. Yeah. Or like, oh, do you play in the symphony? Mm-hmm. And of course, they're talking about Chicago Symphony, which of is course. it's really cool to be in a city with what I think is the best orchestra. In the world. Absolutely. Um, no, I do not play in the Chicago Symphony. Most of the people in Chicago walking around with a cello on their back do not play in the Chicago Symphony. I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would um, agree. And then generally, the conversation with them goes, "Oh, well, maybe someday." Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Assuming that's the job that I want, which is, right. it's a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. It's not a job that I want. Interesting. And also, I think just the, that job is really hard to get. Yeah, literally everybody right. in the world, even people with great orchestra jobs would probably mm -hmm. leave their job to come get that job. Yeah, I mean, one, you have to wait until someone dies, dies yeah. basically. <laughs> And then, you know, like 300 of the best cellists in the world show up for that one spot. Yeah. And 90% of them are qualified and good enough to play in that orchestra. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. That's insane. Right. Let's like so, like, yeah, you could totally be like, yeah, you're good enough. Great. So is everyone else. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Hopefully, he knows nobody. Well, that doesn't really help. No, they're all blind on their They're blind auditions, yeah. yeah. So. And absolutely, like, you could go after one of those jobs, and that's a totally respectable thing to mm -hmm. do. Wanting one and being good enough to get one does not mean that you will. Right. Right. For sure. For and sure. also, not having a full-time orchestra does not mean that you are not good enough. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And that's a stigma that I think is around mm -hmm. classical music a lot. Sure. It's just like, oh, you don't play with them. Yeah. You just go along here with that. Yeah. Well, you know what? I mean, there's only so many goddamn jobs. <laughs> and you're right. You know, I don't I don't think that everybody, after a certain amount of time, you know what I mean? I don't think everybody wants to play the same rep all the fucking time. Yeah. Right? And that's tough. Like, that just wears on you mentally. Mm -hmm. You know, you see the same people all the time. And I'm not saying it's it can't be a great experience. I'm not saying that. But it's like, a fantastic job. And yeah. There's but, some really fantastic musicians in that orchestra and it can be a great career mm -hmm. um, I personally have too many opinions to play in a symphony orchestra oh, man. I understand that. so it takes some resilience to mm -hmm. you know have to be part of a team that's that big and mm -hmm. orchestras are, they're dictatorships 
for, sure. for the benefit of the orchestra. Sure. Um, but no, you do not get to have your own artistic opinion mm -hmm. for the most part. Yeah. And a lot of those people go have other outlets that they're doing that, but <laughs> no, I, no, it's like, shut up and play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, orchestras are beautiful in their own right. Like, it's, I think that's one of the best examples of teamwork like, on the face of the Oh, planet. my God. The sounds, man. Yeah. yeah. Like if, if everyone in the world had to play in an orchestra, I feel like a lot of our, you know, wars and just social issues social yeah. issues yes, just, absolutely. I won't say any more than that exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> would, be, would be resolved sure if you had to show that kind of teamwork and sort of awareness and absolutely you know the cool thing is about playing music you know kind of in, in keeping with what you were just saying is you run into so many different types of people yeah. you know what I mean <laughs> like like all kinds you know what I mean and just being like an artsy person in general mm -hmm. puts you in places like with theater people, with you know artists, with uh, dancers, just you name it, you you probably interact with them on yeah. some level, you know. And it's like, oh man, and they have they all have these different backgrounds. Some of them ultra conservative background, some of them super liberal backgrounds. You're just like, oh yeah, I, I could tell, you know yeah. what I mean. But man, everybody just comes together and they do their thing and they put on these tremendous shows. And you know what? People hang. And it's like you yeah. start to realize like all the extra, all the extra BS, all the extra stuff, you know, that like divides us up, like the the opinions, the well I grew up this way and you know, I was always taught this and people should really be more like you start to realize like that's really only like maybe five to ten percent of who you are. And ninety percent of who you are is just like I'm just like hanging with people. You know what I'm saying? It's just they like are cool. they are cool, man. It's like you know, like you say, if you could just not be like a like like a shit bag, you know what I'm saying? Most of the time, you're like, man, I I actually enjoy spending time with this person. Yeah. Maybe I don't want to do it every single day, but you know, we can do this activity together. You know, and it's it's beautiful. That's a beautiful yeah. fucking thing, man. Yeah, I think especially. I'm like super introverted. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing about playing an orchestra is no one's allowed to talk. <laughs> <laughs> like, but you're creating this like really cool right. collective art project mm -hmm. um, without talking. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. And it takes a talking just it can get in the way. <laughs> it can. Yeah. It can. It um, really can. It can. Yeah. I mean, not that this is. Like no, for sure. But right. this is a very specific thing that we've decided to do. Yeah. What we're doing, what we don't have our instruments here. Right. And there isn't like a very specific specific musical goal that we're trying mm -hmm. to achieve. So no, I, I, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. I, I, I tend to agree with you. You know, but like, like I said, when you're resting for sixty four bars, and you're way in the back, and you're a trombone player, and you get this a lot, it's like, oh yeah, back up, back up. You're covering up the strings. It's like, God damn it, man. You know what I'm saying? But I know I, I get it. I'm with you. Yeah, again, like teamwork, sometimes you don't just get to yeah, man, sometimes, have your own voice the way that you want yeah, to. Yeah, sometimes you're on special teams, and you're yeah. like, you know, you play kickoffs, and, and you go to the sideline, yeah. you know. Sometimes you get yeah, to you're like the kicker. Of the exactly. You only really come out when we really need you. Exactly. Exactly. When you do your job, you go exactly. Back. It's like okay, retreat back to the corner. Man. Yeah. Yeah. No, I dig that, man. That's interesting. You know, just the first time I ever like regularly played in an orchestra, I never really realized how much attention the conductor gives to strings players. Like just in general, it was like holy fuck. Because I played in a lot of concert bands in like elementary and high school, just because having. An orchestra can be like super expensive, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, you know, like so I, it was like kind of all the woodwinds, like so the clarinets, the flutes, the sax, they got you guys as like reductive parts, you know what I'm saying? But like, like being in an orchestra is like, especially when the conductor is a string player, which the regular one I was in, so it was just like he just harped on you guys constantly, yeah. you know? <laughs> I was just like, fuck, man, I actually felt bad. Cause I looked at my parts and looked at some of you guys' parts, especially the violins. It's just like, what? Like, am I even a musician anymore? Because all you do, all you <laughs> see this the whole yeah. time. I'm like holding half notes and whole notes, or I have like this one little part where I like, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm like shining for like a bar and a half. And it's like, okay, mm -hmm. 
you know, shut the fuck up. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, I did. I, I did. So, doctorate, Hawaii, anything else? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, again, like, it just feels like a create your adventure book. So, mm -hmm. when I get some time to actually think about, you know, what could I do next, it's just like, well, what are things that sound fun? Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm a very lucky person to sort of be where I am in my career. Where, right. I mean, I'm very actively having to make connections and opportunities mm -hmm. to make money right um, and but again I've never had for the most part a job where that was like a nine-to-five regular 40 hours a week kind of Good job for you. I've had some for you. interesting of course but jobs. yeah sure <laughs> sure um for me the idea of like applying to a job and getting a job and then just like having it is very strange it is strange it's a strange um, place but being a freelancer is like you're applying to jobs like every week you are. And you really are. There's a certain stress with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. It's, yeah, it's stressful, but it's also like, if I didn't like what I did last week, I'd just go do something different next Absolutely. week. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so there, I mean, I have like a Google Doc of like, big crazy ideas that I'd like sure. to figure out how to do that I mm -hmm. don't know how to do yet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what do I do next? You ever thought about like, producing? I mean, I mean that's, I mean, I don't mean like producing pop music specifically or anything like that, but you know, just like maybe, you know, maybe you have a, a friend, because like music collectives are important, especially mm -hmm. like for us and what we do. Yeah. Uh, you know, like getting cats together and maybe like, commissioning them and like yeah you know just recording their stuff and like putting it out there for like on Spotify just for consumption you know what I'm saying and maybe somehow you could I have no idea but totally. yeah, that's something you've been never thought about really but you know yeah I've, I mean I've thought about things like that sure I think there are certainly a lot of things that I'd love to attempt to do mm -hmm. um, but then going back to like what the skills that I was taught to have yes. coming from a music program, mm -hmm. producing is not in that skill set, yes. um, which is fine. Mm -hmm. I've certainly I've done some things that re required me to learn a new skill set right. on my own mm -hmm. or find people who can help me learn that. Right. I think something like producing or even just the whole realm of like, digital media. Right. It's like a lot of skills that I don't have. Yeah. You know what, man? YouTube yeah. University is a real thing. Yeah. It is a real thing. And I would encourage you to enroll. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because there's a lot of very talented people. Mm -hmm. Or even a place like lynda.com or I think, is it Squares? Maybe it's not Squares. There's, there are teaching sites that will just like give you all those little sure. skill sets, man. It's something to look at. I'm not telling you to become no, a like, I'm certainly not, totally, you know, scary. but like. You know. I think I would encourage musicians as a whole mm. to not limit their careers to the skill sets that they have coming out of school. 100%. Um, 100%. But it's very challenging and takes a kind of a lot of humble effort to admit that you have to go develop new skills. Yes. To do some of the projects that you want to work on. Because, right. like, I've spent the last 20 years like learning to play the cello. <laughs> Yeah. And it's a real thing. It's skills take a long time they to do, develop. They do, man. Want to work. It's um, it's it sucks to do that stuff and then find out that maybe it's not as valuable as you thought it was. Yeah, there's like a very real possibility that you'd go invest time and energy and probably money into this thing and then like mm -hmm. nothing comes of it. Yeah. Which like, I one of the things I give my students, one of the things they have to do for me, even though this is not an area that I'm asked to teach in is they have to write a resume. I love that. It's a great everyone idea. should have a resume before they One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And so as an example, I give them some of my different resumes depending mm -hmm. on what I'm sending them out to. I have seven, so yeah. Yeah. I, I never guess. knew I needed seven until right. I found out I needed seven. Several so, resumes, several cover letters. Yeah. You just 
Absolutely. Things you get over time. Um, but one of the other things I also give them because I've noticed in the past is they get often very frustrated by not having things to fill the page. Oh, absolutely. Um, they're like, well, you've done so much. I've also messed up a lot of stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> so Absolutely. I give them, I call it my failure resume or my mm -hmm. non-resume, and it's all the different things that I've attempted to do that I've applied for that like either really didn't go well mm -hmm. or jobs I didn't get or auditions that didn't work out. I'm like, my resume is a page. Is it really? Well, it, it could my it could is be like longer. five it's pages. Absolutely. Yeah, my yeah, failure yeah. resume is like 12 pages long. Oh, God. Right? So yeah, just yeah like, for sure. I think there needs to be less of a, you know, a fail on the fact that in order to do really cool stuff, you have to like mess up a lot of stuff too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like spend a lot of time with things not working out or like right. making a fool of yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with you, and that's scary as fuck. Yeah, and I think like the more that you do cool things, the scarier it gets. What do you mean? You mean like like the more like the bigger the chances are, or like the likelihood of there being like a like danger um, involved? I think we have this expectation for ourselves. The more accomplished we become, the mm. less we should be failing. Oh, I oh yeah yeah no that's real yeah that's real um, because people get begin to see us a certain way and we kind of see ourselves that way yeah. too. Oh yeah, like, well you're the expert. Right, right, right. Well, yeah, man. <laughs> But we're learning too, still, yeah. man, for sure. Yeah, um, I mean, I remember being a freshman in college and like, I would tell myself like, it's okay that I would really suck at this because I have nothing to lose. And right. like, right. I have no skills. Mm -hmm. I still feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But now I have this like bio that sounds really good when mm -hmm. you read it out loud. And I'm like, a resume that's got, like, got stuff on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons I emailed you, girl. Like, well, she's, she's got it going right? on. Like, she's got it going on. She knows on. what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't. Not really. <laughs> Not really, yeah. I that's just have hilarious. a lot more experience with both sides of that spectrum. Both, sure. like, doing stuff and really sucking at stuff. Mm -hmm. I understand. I appreciate that. Thank you for your honesty. Yeah. <laughs> I dig. I dig. Do you have anything that you think you might want to do non-musically? Like the first thing that popped to your mind. Ooh, yeah. I love writing. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love just, like, art in general. Yes. Um, which is part of the reason, I mean, I was telling you before we started mm -hmm. this, like, ceramics class. Yes. That I'm, like, really bad at. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think for us to sort of get in touch with our creative side mm -hmm. in terms of like a professional career. Yes. We have to take off the professional part every once in a while. Yes. And just be like, I actually just like making stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just for fun. For sure. And that's how it started. Like I saw this instrument, I was like, that looks cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there needs to be a part of my career that also goes to back to like taking my cello out of the case, not just being like Okay, it's time to like make money so I can pay rent. But, right. Like, this thing is cool. Absolutely. You know, I realize I'm just like a seven year old, like masquerading yeah. as a twenty nine year old man. Yep. And like <laughs> literally masquerading. Because I'm yep. just like, man, I don't wanna do any of this shit. <laughs> I just wanna hang. I just wanna hang, but I have to like be like a real person too. Right. So no, I feel that. You know what? I'm so glad you said writing because I scared myself out of being a musician. So I went to school for like broadcast journalism. So I had to write all the time. And I was like, writing in college for me was radically different than writing in high school. And it yeah, was, I actually enjoyed it because writing in high school was never fun. It was, there were way too many restrictions and there were too many topics I didn't give a single fuck about, you know what I mean? I don't understand what the point was. I didn't either. I didn't, I really didn't. Like I, there was only a few times that I kind of remember it being like, yeah, this is cool. And it was really when they just kind of like, just write something. And it was just like, I was free to just create. And I'm sure the story went sideways as fuck, but mm -hmm. I was creating. It was like, yeah. the stream of consonants was, was real. But like getting here and then like writing sports stories. I was here studying sports because it's like my second love. It's actually my first love, but you know, whole other story. So, <laughs> but like, no, I, I'm doing this thing and I'm like, wait a minute, this feels exactly, I don't know how much music writing you've done, but it's like exactly like writing music. And yeah. my brain, 
like it felt the same. I knew it wasn't yeah. the same, but like going through the process, okay, what do I want to write about? How many characters are there? You know, how long does this need to be? Like, you know, how can I make this more expressive? You know, what? how many adjectives can I make to like make this thing come alive more? Yeah. And it's the same thing. It's like adding dynamics. It's like yeah. adding accidentals. It's all this like stuff. It's like, oh my God, you have to this be is creative. amazing. You do, man. And then it has to make sense as you're like reading it down. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like if somebody else can read it and enjoy it, it's just like, yeah, man, I wrote a good thing. Right. And it's that's how I feel when I write music. It's like, yeah, man, people are enjoying it. It's like, okay, I wrote a good thing, man. Yeah. And I performed it well. I think that's the difference, though. Mm -hmm. Well, some people actually read their own shit. And they get really into it. And I love it. You know, but like, with us, you can't just write it. You actually have to perform it, too. Yeah. So there's like a, an additional layer there. But right. it's okay, man. It's it's all great. Yeah. It's, it's cool that you enjoy writing. I don't, I don't know too many musicians that write. Maybe they do and they don't know they like it, you know what I'm saying? But, like, it's interesting to talk about that with you. Yeah. I also think that there's sometimes this, like, oh, well, this is my specialty, so I can't, like, sure. venture out of that and sure. also still be good at my specialty. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. It, like, when you're someone who plays, like, one instrument, like, you can sort of play the piano. Sure. I wouldn't encourage anyone to listen to it. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm yeah. the same. I can um, play chords. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know, like, where middle C is. Exactly. At some point, I could, like, play a song or two. Absolutely. We get to this point in, like, this is the thing that I've become so specialized in and so good at that it literally, like, pays my bills. Yes. And going into any other creative realm where you're not as good just feels like, oh, I suck at this. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, it's scary because you're like, oh, I gotta learn. I gotta learn this shit. I gotta learn this shit again. Yeah. I gotta get good at this. Yeah, yeah. No, that's real. That's real. But yeah, that was <coughs> go into those projects and have those skills. You like have to learn them and practice them and be willing yeah. to also kind of be bad for a while. That's real, and it's hard to do once you've gotten pretty good at something. Yeah. Especially when like other people are consuming it. It's like. Mm. Yeah. I'm not as good as, this, as I am at this other thing. Right. It's like, oh, okay, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I'll just put this away. You know yeah. what I mean? No, I totally, I totally understand. Last question. What kind of stuff do you like writing? Like, what does your, like, hand guide you to? Um, I'm a big thinker. Like, okay. Like, social issues, political, or well, that can maybe be the same. I stay away from politics. Okay. Especially right now. Sure. It's just... Not that I'm not interested, but that's just a mess that I don't. Sure. I'm not ready for it. I, I, <laughs> most of us aren't. I think right. you think we are. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, it's no, it's, that's 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 fine. Um, I'm curious about how like musicians can also get in touch with their like the basic humanity of like being a person. I think like. We often, especially classical musicians, mm -hmm. we like sell ourselves as some like elite form of like humanity. Just yes. Like, yes. Even the way that we talk about people who aren't professional musicians, like, yes. It's almost like like the way Harry Potter talks about muggles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I have this friend who's a non-musician. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we kind of have this idea about ourselves, and I think. Consequently, society has this idea that like we're just this different like, side breed of sure. human. Sure, I think uh, musicians also kind of look at you guys that way too a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real thing. It's it real is. Thing. Yeah. yeah, totally. Um, but for me, the end goal of playing music is to like take humanity at its raw form mm -hmm. and like make something really beautiful out of yeah. that. So the first requirement of that is to, like, <laughs> admit that you're a human. Yeah, 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 yeah. And even, I think, more importantly, but also more, more difficult than that is to tell other people who are maybe even paying to see you perform that you are a yes. human. Yes. You know what, man? It's funny because when people pay to come see people, they kind of want to see somebody that's like more than human yeah, a little totally. bit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. how 
human, like, how relatable can you make yourself without, like, destroying, like, the veil of, like, uh, like that that performer entertainer veil, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like that's that's a weird thing. It is, you it's, know. And it's I'm still kind of trying to figure out what that looks like. Sure. I don't particularly like the idea of like the entertainer or like sort of the mystical mm. thing, and it's a that's sort of a countercultural line of thinking like mm-hmm. people like seeing something that is awe-inspiring yes and they like sort of the ooh, that's like magical yeah or, absolutely um, and there's we're attracted to things that are kind of like oh i could like i could never do that right and it has right. that kind of incredible aura to it mm-hmm. um I would love, and this is a very lofty thing of me, to change the perspective and to see the incredible in how much skill and how much work and how much time was invested to get to that point. Yes. Um, I'd love for people to come to concerts and have like a pretty good understanding of what it takes to be standing on that stage right. and be inspired by that rather than a oh, clear that person is, like, some kind of alien that was just born with this right. innate skill to, like, rub mm-hmm. horse hair over a steel string and, like, make it sound good. <laughs> because that's a thing right. that, like, it, it is. Born with, it is. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Or, like, to blow into this, like, windy metal tube. Yeah. Like, <laughs> God, is he doing it? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, that's, a, like, a big conversation. And... But I think what that could do is to invite audiences to relate to the music by seeing themselves on the stage rather than sure. sort of having to sit back and like watch from right. like outside mm-hmm. the the creative part of that. Right, right, right. You know, I think that's why people I think that's why there are documentaries, right? Mm-hmm. Because it brings people like behind the curtain. It's like, yeah. oh man, they actually rehearse this a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they sat at the piano for a long time figuring this out. They practice this same passage over and over and over and over again. You know, it's like, oh, they get better at things exactly like how I get better at things right. through repetition and like, like you said earlier, breaking things down into the mm-hmm. smallest form. And then kind of like exploiting them in as many ways as possible so that yeah. you can just understand what it is. Yeah, it's like demystifying the art, you know. Right. Yeah, no, you're right. Because I tell people what I do is very simple. It's like, yeah, once you kind of understand like the basics of it, it's like, yeah, you can basically do exactly what I'm doing, you know. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I could probably get you to where I am in twice as fast as I did, you know, or maybe even <laughs> quicker. Really the hard way. Yeah, ex- exactly. But that's that trial and error thing that you're right. talking about. And you probably got better at it than most of your teachers did faster, you know what I'm saying? Because they just, maybe some of them, yeah. maybe some of them. But it's like, yeah, I'm going to just show you how to like work through right. the stuff faster, you know? So, no, that's that's cool, man. I Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it, because... Yeah, I mean, shit, man. Yeah. I think there are a lot of self-help books that do that in a different type of way. But, you know, it's just like getting down to, like, your very basic humanity and understanding, like, why you suffer sometimes and, like, mm-hmm. why you're not successful and mm-hmm. what you need to do to be happy, how to, like, handle relationships, you know. And for us, it's weird because we spend all this time in the fucking practice room in yeah. solitary confinement basically and then we go out and show ourselves off to the world it's just like oh man thanks for coming yeah. <laughs> thanks for coming yeah, yeah. secretly socially awesome. exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean like the majority of what I do is actually really boring of, oh man 90% of it yeah, yeah for sure but I mean I guess maybe I'm still in like some optimistic bubble but I'd like to think that there is a way that we could relate to the people who are coming to hear us play or come yeah. to listen to music on a more like even playing field mm-hmm. than a I'm doing this great thing and watch me. Sure. And be amazed by it. Mm-hmm. Which is that's also a 
cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, you're right. It lowers the barrier of entry, right? Yeah. Also, what that probably does, like, it gives people who aren't into what you may be doing specifically an easier way to accept what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, yeah. oh, I don't I don't want to do that. And it's mostly because you don't understand it, right? Let's just say it's just yeah. some like easy to get along with music. Sure. Let's call it Mozart. I think Mozart stuff is like easy to get along yeah. with. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I love you, Mozart. But I, I no, I do. I've seen Amadeus like ten times. Um, have you ever seen that movie? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I did. I did. But like, if you kind of like say, if you kind of lower like the, you, you humanize it a little bit more. It's like, oh yeah, like. Yeah, I will check it out because it seems it's something I can get with. Yeah. And like you say, it's not this like lofty high society on a cello <laughs> You know, kind of thing. It's like, yeah, yeah I'm just I'm Sarah and I'm, I'm a pretty good cello player. You can come check me out. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I, I'm with you. But I also like have a life and like do other things and mm-hmm. I'm like bad at stuff and I like go to the grocery store every week. <laughs> yes. Mostly. Yes. Yeah, I think yeah. I'd love to just get to a point where music becomes a, you can relate to this because you're a human, mm-hmm. not in spite of the fact that you're a human. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. And like you can be part of this because you're a human. Right. Right. You know, that happens in church or like concerts when people just sing along. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, man, I'm singing the exact same words that this person is saying. Yeah. It just adds. You know what I mean? Man, you write that book. Write a book. <laughs> Right away, you need your own podcast. That's what you should do. That no, seriously, I mean, you should talk about this kind of thing, man. I don't know who's gonna be paying attention, but somebody will. You know, that's why we're here. Yeah, yeah. baby. Yeah. One person is an artist. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I guess I am. Right. My my like standard for having a successful concert attendance or whatever mm-hmm. that I'm doing. I do like other things besides concerts too. If there are more people that come to like see or watch or be part of it. Mm-hmm. Than it took to make it, then it's a good day. So six so five it's performers, like a string six, quartet, yeah. and there are five people in the audience. Like it is a good day. Sadly, I agree with you right. enthusiastically. Though. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, but I've also like had bad. really great days where I'm the only person mm-hmm. performing, and there are like three hundred people that showed up. Wow, like, yeah, they're rare, but they happen. Yeah, they do happen, man. They do happen. I've, I've seen so many memes where it's like, uh, before, it's like, it'll be like one was like this huge concert filled with people, and it's like, yeah, you see this concert, but you didn't see it as like another picture was like four people standing there, and you're like rocking out, you know? It's just like, yeah, I, I definitely get that one. Those I, Instagram filters. Oh my Instagram God, podcast. exactly, man. Exactly, exactly. Well, we've been at this for a long time, yeah. <laughs> and I did, not, I did not anticipate that, but. You are good at talking about the things that you know, and I appreciate you coming, Sarah. This was a pleasure for me. It's been fun. Yeah, man. I was not expecting this, but like you said earlier, I had no, I had no expectations other than getting to know you better, and I felt like we did that. Yeah. Um, where can people reach out to you and like you know hire you for things? Ooh, I have a website, sarahhansonmusic.com. True. I will go home right now and go update that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I dig. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything cool coming up? Um, for music? Yeah. Like where we can come check you out. I have to think about that. That's all right. Yeah. You can so go to SarahHanson.com and she'll probably tell you what it is. So, yeah. yeah boom. <laughs> there it is. We plug in the website. All right, once again, thanks for coming out, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, guys, this was Sarah Hansen once again, cellist extraordinaire, educator at Bradley, and she has 17 other jobs that she (laughs) she uses to uh, feed herself on a daily basis. Uh, I'm going to chop this video up, and I'm going to take the coolest parts and make it visible for you so you don't have to sit through the whole two-hour interview that we just had. So uh, click, like, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks for joining us. Peace.